The new $15 an hour minimum wage took effect in California last month, but now there is a push to raise that number again. Progressive entrepreneur Joe Sandberg is the leader of the Living Wage Act Initiative of 2022. The ballot measure would raise California's minimum wage to $18 per hour by 2025 to help millions of California workers keep up with rising living costs. In a, in a PDF on the measure, Sandberg said, quote, there is not one California worker who is making a good living on $15 an hour, not one. Joining us now to discuss this act is business leader and anti-poverty act advocate Joe Sandberg. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. And, and so, so, Joe, what are you what are you expecting when you when it comes to this ballot initiative? Because California, it just seems like op opponents and sometimes proponents of, of these initiatives have just endless amounts of money to pour at them. Do you think this is going to be one of the ones that, that attracts that type of attention from business? Maybe. Look, we'll be ready for opponents to spend a boatload of money. We're gonna take nothing for granted, and we're gonna run this campaign all the way to the end as if we're down big. And that's the attitude I think you always have to take. On an analytic basis, though, this is a wildly popular policy. 60% plus of Californians want a minimum wage of $18 or higher. Furthermore, one of the ways that corporate lobbyists often defeat ballot propositions is by confusing the issue and taking the complicated language of the ballot proposition and turning it into something it's not. But the difference with the proposition to raise the minimum wage is that it, it is exactly what it is. It's very simple to understand. You don't need to read 10 paragraphs, which means it also isn't as vulnerable to being misconstrued or mischaracterized. This is simple. Do you want workers to get a raise? If you oppose paying workers more, if you oppose paying our essential workers who took care of us in the pandemic, who took care of our sick loved ones, who brought us food when we couldn't leave our home, if you don't want to give those people a raise, then you know where you stand. If you believe that workers should earn a living wage, if you believe that the best way to grow the entire economy is to put more money in the pockets of workers who then spend it at local businesses, then you know where you stand and you support the Living Wage Act of 2022. So I believe the clarity of this policy and the proposal is going to uh, make it stronger and less vulnerable to the kinds of crazy attacks that, that sometimes come the way of good policies. We will be ready for anything, though. What is the? Do you know what like the you know the what's like a yearly salary of, of at fifteen dollars an hour versus eighteen dollars an hour if you're working a full time job? What it, like what does that translate to for the like yearly salary? When we pass this, it will mean a wage raise of six thousand two hundred and forty dollars per year for over five million workers. Twenty four dollars of extra pay a day for over 5 million people. And I think it's crucial that we understand what's at stake. That's the difference between whether kids are getting one or two meals a day or three meals a day. Are we sending California kids to school with empty stomachs or with stomachs filled with healthy food? Are our parents able to make their rent? Are they able to afford fixes to their car? Are they able to buy the extra supplies for their kids' school? Are they able to buy new winter clothes for their kids. That's the difference between $6,240 of extra income a year, which is also why I think we're gonna pass this as people understand that it's, what's at stake here, whether people can buy life's basic needs. And the easy, and the easy math for, for people, you, you, can, you can actually just double what the hourly wage is to get to the salary. So if, you make, if it's $10 an hour, then that works out to a $20,000 of annual income working 40 hours a week. So $18 an hour would be a $36,000 you know, annual take home, which though that doesn't include benefits and all of the other things that would be taken out of it, uh, which often takes up to a third of a salary. So we're actually, you're back to talking about something like a $20,000 annual salary to live on uh, cash with, you know, using the rest of it for the health insurance and the other, and the other benefits. Uh, but jo Joe, that's a really interesting point that you make about how simple this is. Yes or no, do you want $18 an hour? Like it, it almost feels like a lot of the spending would be, would be wasted because it, everyone understands what wages are. Everyone understands what $15 is, what $18 is. And you can 
propagandize all you want about the effect of it, that it's going to lead to you know, uh, inflation or it's going to lead to job loss or it's going to create jobs, it, whatever you could tell people, but people kind of already have their understanding of what the effect would be. And so as you looked at the polling, are you, so you must be pretty confident that, you know, no matter what the attacks are, the, the people who support it are going to remain fairly supportive of it in the end. Well, what you said really hits the nail on the head. People understand what this issue is about. And the arguments against a higher minimum wage, the arguments to keep people's wages low so they can't afford life's basic needs, those are arguments that have been used over the past 30 years over and over and over. So there's nothing new under the sun as far as the opposition to a higher minimum wage. People know what it means. It's visceral for people. And there's evidence all around the country that shows that actually this gets support across the political aisle. Let's take Florida as a case in point. In November of 2020, Florida voters passed a ballot initiative that increased Florida's minimum wage to $15. Now that passed with about 62% of the vote. President Biden won 48% of the vote in Florida. So it ran 14 percentage points ahead of the Democratic nominee for president in Florida. Now, $15 in Florida is about equal to $18 in California on a cost of living and adjusted basis. So yeah, in short, I'm confident this is gonna win. And I'm confident that the money that people spend to oppose it will be money that they're vaporizing. And whatever you think about uh, big corporate lobbyists who oppose the interests of working people, they don't like wasting money. And while we will be ready for anything, I believe they're going to look at the notion of spending $100 million to oppose this and see that their chance of defeating this is pretty slim. If, if I were going to come up with the most pessimistic outlook for this, it would, it would be what you just said, the cost of living in California. Are, are you nervous that people will go into the ballot box and say, I want a better life for all of these essential workers who've done so much for me? I want, but I don't want it at a potential increase in the cost of living in California, which is already killing me. And so they'll, they'll go in and, they, and they'll tell people they voted yes, but they'll, they'll actually vote no. That, that, if I were going to concoct the most pessimistic scenario, it would be that. What, 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 what would, what's your response to that? Well, it's an understandable point of view, but I think what's more likely to happen is actually the exact opposite, because I think people understand that when the things that you have to buy are going up in price, it's basic logic that putting more money in the pockets of the people who need to buy those things is a way to help them afford those things. If you really step back from the filter bubble of political discourse, it's pretty bonkers that the response to a dynamic where the cost of life's basic needs is rising is that, no, the worst thing you can do is pay people more money. People understand that the reason that the cost of things people need to buy is rising isn't because of workers getting paid more. It's because of CEOs hoarding profits for themselves. It's because of a lack of investment in domestic supply chain. It's because of a lack of affordable housing. It's because of tax incentives that have driven luxury goods instead of affordable goods. Like People are pretty intuitive that those are the reasons why life's basic needs have become more expensive, not because workers are paying, being paid more. And to put a fine point on it, um, we've tried how it goes with paying workers crap wages. That's yeah. what we've been doing for 40 years. Yeah. And the cost of life's basic needs have gone up. So I think people are ready to try something different. Right. We'll find out. Joe, uh, thanks so much for joining us and good luck. Thanks. And we will have more Rising right after this.